Hi, John Economaki here from Bridge City Toolworks. Today I'd like to share with you version two of the Chopstick Master. This device allows young and old to make a beautiful pair of handcrafted chopsticks in about 15 minutes, and it's just the most fun thing we've ever invented. As you can see, it comes in a beautiful box. The individual components include the base unit. This is the red arm for making chopsticks with the five millimeter tip diameter. This is the axle for the arm, two acrylic wedges, pivoting depth sled, depth stop, uh, bench hook, two Allen wrenches, manual, sandpaper, chopstick oil, HP8 mini block plane with depth skids, pencil, honing guide, 10 pair of chopstick blanks and six species of woods, and 10 chopstick bags. So let's get started. To begin, the most important thing is setting the proper depth of the iron for, the, for making the chopstick blanks. And we do that by adjusting the iron protrusion with this knob in the back of the plane. Now this plane also has an adjustable mouth, as you can see, that moves back and forth. What I like to do when I'm setting this up is close the mouth so that it just barely touches the iron, and then take my finger, and I just want to slightly feel that edge protrusion. It shouldn't be like a big giant speed bump. It ju you should just barely feel it. Now this feels really good. Now, what is the proper mouth opening? You want the mouth to be about two thicknesses of the shaving you're going to take. In other words, you need some gap in there so that the shaving can come up through the top of the plane. And so this feels pretty good. So let's just leave that at that. F step number one, we need to number our blank so we know where we are in the process. And that's fairly simple. We'll just put a one, two, three, and a four and you would repeat that on both blanks. Next, we're going to put side one up. With both knobs set to setting one, you set the blank in the unit kitty corner, and you'll notice that there's a small pin right here that will trap the blank. The reason for that pin is every once in a while you'll get grain that is reversed, and we will need to turn the plane backwards and cut this way, and that prevents the plain blank from coming off the jig. Then you take the acrylic wedges, slide them in, and you're going to create a slight S-curve in the blank. And the reason for that, and make sure it's down all the way, the reason for that is it allows us to use the entire width of the iron so we're not just dulling a little seven millimeter strip right down the center of the iron. The blank size, if you want to make your own, is seven millimeter square, by 270 millimeters in length. Okay, next, we put the plane on, the plane body so that the pivoting depth sled is trapped in the fixture, and we just push. Now there's lots of techniques on planing. I've seen people do this. I've seen people do a more soulful approach where they can just actually feel each shaving come off. And my response is, why not enjoy the process? You're not in a hurry. So I'm just going to continue to cut. Now you'll notice it's cutting more down at the end than it is at the top. And that's because we're creating a taper. And you're just going to continue to cut until the plane no longer is cutting. And you'll feel it. Now, see, feel that? It's not cutting. So we're done. Every once in a while, you're going to want to clean out the mouth. Next. Pop the blank out, take the wedges out, rotate to side two. By the way, each side gets successively easier because we're moving less wood. Put the wedges back in. And that quit cutting. Take the blank out. And you want to make sure every once in a while, if you're making a lot of chopsticks, that you don't get shavings down inside of here. They'll screw up the geometry. I'm going to rotate this to setting number two. And I'm going to put on side number three. So basically, you're just the motor. The jig works. And how it works is I have a fixed cutting plane. I only can cut from these skids up, and I'm manipulating the chopstick blank underneath that. And that's how we accomplish the taper. 
And if you haven't noticed, I'm left-handed. But you can do it right-handed just as easy. Now that quick cutting. Now I'm going to go to side number four. Put the wedges back in. And that quick cutting. By the way, a lot of people like to save these shavings. You can pack Christmas ornaments, glass objects. Um, so you might not want to throw those away. Okay, now we have a basic chopstick blank, which is square on one end and much smaller square on the other end. And that's approximately five millimeters. Now, this would not be a very enjoyable experience eating with a square bladed chopstick like this, so we're going to put the corner down in the fixture. And if you're careful, you can do this without holding it, but I find that being able to hook my thumb back here and starting about two-thirds of the way back, we're going to turn that end into an octagon. Again, you'll feel the plane quit cutting. It just feels like it's sliding back and forth, not cutting. Let me rotate it again. And last one. And you can see I have a beautiful octagon on the end, square on this end. Now, it's very unprofessional to have a square-ended chopstick. So what we want to be able to do is put a beautiful diamond finial on there. And we accomplish that by using this end of the chopstick master. You slide it in the clamp till it hits that stop. Remember, that has to be 8 millimeters from the bottom. And we're going to lock this in place. Now there's a little trick to this that I want to show you that's, that's really important. You see the knob right here? You want to start with the knob right on top of that blank. The iron is back here. But what that allows me to do is avoid crashing the front of the nose of the plane into that, into that uh, chopstick blank. So by starting on top, I'm just going to make a series of short rapid cuts, and it's done. And you can see that I've put a facet on there. Don't worry that this has not been cut because I'm actually just a little bit past center and that works perfect. We're going to loosen the blank. Come up. Knob goes straight over the top. We can skew this either way if you're right or left handed. Doesn't matter. Skew it. And at that point you can see that I have that. Now, you may want to be able to m move your chopstick blank up and just use a two-half finial, which is also cool looking. Rotate it, lock it, knob on top. Last one. By the way, if you're doing this on a kitchen counter, if you put a newspaper down first, you can make your chopsticks, say you're having a dinner party, people make their chopsticks, you just roll the, dinner, the newspaper up and your mess goes into the garbage. Now this is unbelievable, but this is absolutely perfect. That can't be made any better than what you see here. That is a beautiful diamond finial. Now the second to the last thing is the chopstick master comes with a little piece of 400 grit. The only part of this chopstick blank that the plane did not cut are these four corners from about the end to here. And if you just soften those a little bit, feels smooth to the touch. And the last thing we have to do is you just get a paper towel, put a little bit of the chopstick oil on and oil this up. And there you have it. And you would repeat that for the second chopstick. It's really a blast.